Okay, YouTube, today's project is working on this Komatsu D20A-5. So uh, the problem with it is it will not steer to the right. From what I understand, and I'm by no means an expert on dozers, in fact, this is the first one I've ever had. Uh, from what I understand, it has a two-part steering system. It has the uh, hydraulic steering valve right here that allows hydraulic pressure to move through the valve and then keep pressure on the clutches, steering clutches that are underneath here. And that uh, transfers power out to the sprocket that then allows the machine to, to roll, to keep pushing forward. So the first part of the steering system is if I pull this right lever backwards, you can see this plunger right here. So if I pull the right lever, it should push that plunger in. So that should be the first part where the, now those clutches are allowed to start slipping. So it will allow the machine to start turning. If I continue to pull, you can see those linkage move there. That actually engages the brake band around the drum. And then that would allow me to turn on a dime and stop that track completely. Okay, so that's what it's doing. Obviously, it's not relieving pressure off those clutches, uh, and those are the my two theories for it. So I'm gonna start investigating it, and like I said, I'll bring you guys back once I have some stuff apart. Okay, guys, so I think I found the problem. Um, <clears throat> I took off the, the main steering valve that sat up here, and underneath were these two slave cylinders. I think that's what they're called. Uh, anyway, so when I took apart the right side, which is the problem that's been having, I've been having a problem, this is what I found. So this thing is all rusted and corroded up, and I think that's my problem. Is, so I'm going to take this thing apart, clean it up, and see if that fixes my problem. I also took off the top of the housing for the clutch here, so you can see, um, so this is the brake band, and then this is the drum, and then obviously inside are all the clutches. So this is what it looks like when it's still together. Um, I found that this arm here was seized up, so I, I had my theory about how this thing worked backwards. I thought that those slave cylinders would keep pressure on this arm that then kept pressure on the clutches to allow them to drive. And then when I pulled the handle, it relieved pressure. It's really the opposite way around. So um, when I pull the lever, it allows the slave cylinders to receive pressure and it pushes this arm that way, which then um, presses the plate off the clutches and allow the clutches to slip. So uh, I have a problem on this side. The springs are not nearly as strong as they were on the right side. And I noticed when I was running the machine, when I started pushing dirt, that the track on the left side would actually stop, uh, which is not good because that means your clutches are slipping just under the weight of the machine sitting on the track. So uh, I got to do some research, but... I'm thinking I'm probably going to end up pulling both sides of these out and refurbishing the clutches and the springs because I'm already here and so I might as well do the job right the first time versus having to come back later 
uh, if I start having another problem. Okay, so I definitely think this is the main problem. This thing's completely seized up. Uh, and right now I'm trying to figure out how to get it apart so I can refurbish it without, actually, without damaging it. Uh, and I gotta go see if I, uh, if it's possible to buy a new one of these or buy a new cylinder. So this is the other one. I took it apart just to make sure it was looking good. Um, and so this is what it looks like should this uh, cylinder here just pulled right out of here um, and I was able to clean it up. So you can see some corrosion and everything on the cylinder, but this is part, this part is exposed and sits outside of the housing here. So I think I should be able to just run some sandpaper over this, clean it up and reuse this. But we'll see if I can find new parts and how much they are. Okay, this thing is seized up really bad. I can't get it apart. Um, I've let it sit for 48 hours full of penetrating oil that I put in the port here. Uh, and that hasn't helped me at all to pull it apart. So what I'm going to do, I'm using this as an example here, I'm going to tack weld the nut on the end of it. Uh, and then hopefully I can use a socket to slowly start moving it left and right uh, and start working it out. So we'll see how that works. Okay, so here it is in all of its ugliness, but it did work because I got it to spin. So now I just need to work it on, work it out, and hopefully I can clean it up and just rebuild it. Okay, so I have these rebuilt and cleaned up. I could not find these parts online uh, just by doing a search, and I didn't even bother checking with the manufacturer because I assumed that they would cost a fortune. So. Uh, I also, this is it cleaned up and look how corroded and rusty it still is. Uh, I also did not want to just put these back in because I hate putting something back together that I know is just going to fail again uh, and most likely in the near future because they're already damaged and rusty still. So ran into Tacoma and uh, talked with guys at Epic Industrial. Great guys. They've done small jobs like this for me before and uh, they just made me new rods out of some chrome molly rod. So having the chrome molly rod in here, I shouldn't have a rust issue uh, as far as it seizing up and uh, should not have this problem reoccurring. Okay guys, so I'm working on taking the whole drum clutches and uh, brakes out right here. And um, so it looks like uh, I have to disconnect this whole drum set and clutches from uh, this plate right here. And then you can see there's another one right here. There's one of the bolt heads. So this whole system slides out of the center of those. Okay, so I'm taking apart the clutch here and I have put an all thread through the center to um, capture those springs. So I'm going to uh, use the all thread to compress those springs and then start removing the bolts that hold uh, this whole system together. Okay, so got it all apart here. Uh, definitely suggest using something like an all thread to keep those springs compressed because uh, if I would have just pulled those bolts out, uh, it would have been bad. So um, everything's looking pretty good. The teeth look decent on everything. Uh, you know, this is just the downside of a dry clutch and drum system is it can rust. So the clutches, the actual fiber clutches don't look all that bad as far as material, but these are the steel plates that they slip against in between and look how bad they are. I mean, these things are supposed to be smooth and shiny like this. Um, so this rust and everything, this will just cause the, uh, this will just eat up the clutch material uh, itself. So granted this clutch hasn't been moving or spinning because it was all locked up, 
but still. So uh, I'm already here and in it, so I'm gonna be replacing all of this. But um, overall, it wasn't too bad to take apart. That all thread really came in handy as far as letting me control taking it apart. Uh, so new clutches, new uh, steel plates, and then new springs are gonna get put in here. Okay guys, so I wanted to show you how I'm pulling these plates. So I'm pulling uh, <clears throat> this one and probably this one also. Uh, there's a bearing between, the throwout bearing over here that I'm gonna replace. And then I wanna check the, the seals. There's a seal over here and a seal out there. Um, so this is a polar bar. So this is obviously a homemade one, but there's commercially built ones. What I wanted to point out, cause I ran into a problem here is at first, um, I hooked, I connected these bolts. I threaded these into this uh, outer plate here and was trying to do it that way. And um, I just wasn't getting leverage and it looked like this plate, uh, it was actually starting to flex a little bit. And then what I realized was there's actually a couple inner bolt holes here. And one of those bolt holes is used for um, a retaining clip so that the nut on the uh, spindle shaft here can't come undone. Uh, and I thought there was just one hole, but uh, after some investigation, I realized that there's actually two. So once I threaded these bolts into those holes, it gave me a lot more leverage um, right next to that spindle. And I was able to pop it free uh, with minimal effort. Okay, so I've got the flange plate out. And then once this pops off, the, this whole uh, yoke and throw out bearing and cage assembly come, comes right along with it. So uh, the seals inside the machine, they look good. I'm gonna leave them alone. Plus I would have to dismantle a lot more of the machine to uh, get the spindle out and pull the seal. Um, I am gonna replace this bearing. It doesn't feel all that loose, but it's pr it spins pretty freely there, and I'm sure a brand new one would, uh, would be a little tighter than that. And um, I'm here, so I might as well do it. All right, so I pulled off the outer flange plate so that I could do a visual inspection of the seal here, just like I did on the inner one. And I'm glad I did because the seal's bad and it's leaking. You can see these bolt heads, they are a little wet with oil. And even if I run my hand down under here, you can see that we have remnants of oil. So that seal is definitely bad and needs to be cha uh, changed out. So I'll definitely be working on that. Okay, so the seal is mounted right in here. So I'm pulling this housing off uh, from the diagram in the parts manual. It looks like this whole thing should pull out here and I should be able to then pop the seal out and put a new seal in and then replace this. So I had a polar bar in here and it was pushing on the spindle here and I had it hooked to these two bolts and it was putting a lot of pressure on it and I wasn't really getting uh, this housing to move and I'm not sure where uh, this spindle is mounted or how sturdy it is. There is some slop in it, and per the diagram, it rides on two bearings, and I just didn't want to put a bunch of force on a, a bearing or something that isn't supposed to see any force. So what I'm doing is I'm just threading these into uh, the pre-existing holes that are, uh, I'm sure, in there designed to uh, help pull this thing out. So I'm just threading these in. A turn at a time and as you can see it uh, it's coming apart there so this is that's the way I'm doing it so I'm not putting any pressure on that uh, that shaft all right so I got this out I believe in the manual they call this part the cage uh, anyway I'm gonna see if I can read that number right there on the seal and be able to get one just at an auto parts store or something like that versus having trying to order one online uh, so this thing definitely has a specific orientation when you put it back in. So I marked it here 
uh, so that I can make sure it goes back in correctly uh, and I get the bolt holes lined up with the correct ones. Um, so I'm gonna replace this seal here. Uh, there's also an O-ring right here and that could definitely be part of the reason that it's leaking oil out. So I'm gonna to try to find a new O-ring and replace that. So this thing slides out. It has the race for a bearing in there. Um, so you definitely wanna be careful when you're taking this thing apart. It's a pretty important uh, part. And then the spindle or shaft uh, is in there. So the nice thing about this is I was able to then just carefully slide this out. So uh, I can do a visual inspection here of the bearings and the shaft and the teeth. And um, it's a cool thing about taking stuff apart is being able to inspect uh, the components and uh, just seeing how it all works. So this is looking good. Uh, so I'm not worried about anything there. And uh, so I'm just gonna replace this O-ring, the seal, and then hopefully put it back together. And, uh, and then I won't have to worry about that leaking oil. So here's the flange plate. And I have another problem here. You can see that this plate is pitted and corroded from uh, rusting. So the problem that this is gonna cause for me is uh, even after I change that seal, so this recesses into that seal and uh, keeps the oil from being able to come out. So even after I change that seal, these small little corrosion uh, divots in this thing are going to prematurely wear out the new seal and I'm gonna be right back in the same place that I am right now. Um, who knows how long that will take, but this is it after all cleaned up and everything. So uh, I'm sure that it'll be very difficult to find one of these, and if I do, it'll be, uh, it'll cost an arm and a leg. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fill all this area with JB Weld and then sand it down nice and smooth so that when I put it back in, it's a smooth surface for that seal to write on. I've used this technique before for similar applications and it seems to work very well. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do and I'll show you guys once I'm done what it looks like. So here's what it looks like with the JB Weld on it. I just smeared it on there to try to fill those pits. And then I'm using a file and very gently filing all the big chunks off. And then I'll take sandpaper to it and finish it with sandpaper to make it all smooth. So here it is after it's been sanded. It's hard to, to see, but if you notice how all those low spots have gray in them now, that's the JB Weld in the low spot. So. Um, so it's a nice smooth surface now so that as that seal rides over the top of it, um, it shouldn't be getting chewed up by the pitting in the metal here. So this should, uh, this should make it so that my seal lasts a little bit longer. Okay, I got the clutches and the steel plates, so it's time to put the clutch pack back together. Um, I said I was gonna put new springs in, and I decided against that, and for a couple reasons. One, it was very hard to find an aftermarket spring um, that met the exact specifications that provided the force that is needed to push these clutches together. Uh, and then when I went to the manufacturer, they wanted $30 a spring. So we're looking at over $500 by the time I got 16 springs here. So I did a decent amount of research and I went to locations and I found springs that, uh, aftermarket springs that I was trying to um, get to similar length, similar size, and I just wasn't able to uh, come up with a close enough spring. They were either provided too much force or not enough force. And uh, what I mean by that is the specs here for the clutch springs, uh, these are the specs per the manual. 
So free length on them, supposed to be 3.3 uh, inches. I converted everything from metric over to standard. Uh, when they're installed, they're crushed down to 2.2 inches. Well, when they're at 2.2 inches, they should be putting out 167 pounds of force each. Uh, the nice thing about these specs or this uh, page is they then also tell you uh, what the limits are as far as when those springs are no good and you need to replace them. So what I did was I rigged up a system to actually check my springs and see what they, how they were doing. So I just got a bathroom scale, threw it in my press here, and I could put each spring on here, a steel plate up above, and then when I compressed the spring, I could then see what the final uh, weight rating is that they were putting out, and then I could measure between the two steel plates and make sure that I was at the correct installation point. Uh, and when I did that, uh, each spring passed uh, and they're right around 160 pounds. So I've lost about seven pounds of force uh, from these springs. I'm assuming this dozer is somewhere around late 70s to early 80s. So this thing's 40 years old. Uh, so if we can get another 40 years out of these springs before they are outside of the spec, I would consider that a win. So that's, uh, that's what I'm doing with the springs and why I'm gonna reuse them. Uh, and hopefully when I take the other side apart, I don't find any broken springs because uh, then I will have to figure something out. All right, I have it all back together. And just like when I took it apart, I need to come up with a way to uh, press this on to compress all these springs so that then these bolts will capture that plate. So uh, taking it apart was easier. I just used that all thread to control it coming apart. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in the press now and, uh, and lay this down this way so that I can just press this plate down onto all these springs and I'll leave uh, these bolts exposed so that then I can thread them in and capture the, the plate. Um, I'm gonna put tape over these bolts right now so that when I lay it down, they don't fall out. Um, and so I tried lining up the teeth for the clutches so that the drum will go back on, but they move around so easily right now. So what I'm gonna do is once I get the plate back on, I'll use the all thread to compress those springs a little bit more, and then I'll work it through the drum uh, or work the drum over the top so I know the teeth are lined up. And then I'll back that all thread off again uh, so that then I know the teeth will stay in the, the position they need to be and they'll fit uh, in and out of the drum as necessary. All right, so time to finally start putting this whole thing back together so maybe I can actually do some work with it. So everything in red is parts that go inside the well that I pulled uh, components out of. So a uh, couple things that I was working on um, that maybe I didn't follow up on. So this part here, I was able to get a new seal, put a new seal in it, and then uh, has an O-ring right here. Looks like that's probably to make sure that uh, gear oil doesn't leak out and moisture doesn't get in. So uh, I was able to reseal those. And then the brake band here, I just went ahead and changed the lining on it. So um, I found a set of brake bands online for like $400. So I was able to go down to a clutch and brake uh, service place and, um, and they were able to reline the brake band for me for 130 bucks out the door. So if you're pulling one of these apart and you need new brake lining, I highly suggest that. I, uh, I checked with the manufacturer for the brake lining and each one of these pads, I wanna say, were like $38. Uh, and there's six of them on here, six or seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it was just god-awful expensive. So that was definitely the way to go. 
Um, the other is a throw out bearing here. You saw earlier in the video how freely that bearing spun and now here's what it looks like brand new. So this is what it should feel like. Uh, that other bearing still inevitably had some life in it, but since I'm in here rebuilding everything, it was definitely a good idea to change that bearing out. So uh, that's it. All right guys, so I'm taking apart the left side now. Uh, on the other side, I talked about getting access to these bolts and how difficult it was to unbolt them because they're tucked in behind this part of the frame here. Uh, and I wanted to show you something. So uh, while assembling the other side, I found or noticed that. So there's a plug on the outside of the machine that you can pull out. And when you pull it out, and spin the clutch, you, it lines up perfectly with those bolts. So my guess is that's why it's there because they needed a way to assemble and disassemble. So that will make it much easier now to take this thing apart instead of how I did it before, which was putting a wrench back in here and moving it ever so slightly each turn. So just wanted to add that in. Okay, so I have all the parts out of the left side and yikes. So this side is much worse off uh, as far as inside. I'm surprised that it was actually working and driving. This was the side that was working correctly. So uh, here's that housing that has the seal in it. Uh, it disintegrated as I was taking it out. You can see how wet this is from oil. Um, the drum has actually a sheen of oil on it. So it's been leaking oil for a while. Um, moisture's been getting in and you can see that my bearing here is all rusted up. Uh, it's still moves and functions, but it looks bad. Um, so this was the side that was, when I was pushing dirt, the track would just stop. And I assumed it might be because my springs here on the clutch were weak or I had broken ones. They look like they're all intact um, and feel like they're nice and strong. So I think what happened was I got gear oil into the clutch and these are supposed to be dry clutches, and so they just started slipping. So um, I got a lot of work to do as far as cleaning this up. I'll probably have to press that race out, put a new race in, uh, get a new bearing here, and uh, get all this stuff cleaned up. So part of the problem, I think, is this O-ring right here. They have an O-ring on this, and that's, from what I can tell is to keep oil from leaking out, but then also water from getting in. And either moisture was able just to go right past that O-ring or while it was sitting for years, it just accumulated moisture inside there and rusted this all up. But the other one was much better looking and didn't have nearly as much rust and uh, damage to it, so. Uh, I don't know exactly why it ended up like this, but I'm going to clean it all up. New seal, new bearing, probably new race, new O-ring. And then what I did on the last one was I actually used some sealant on the flange here. So when I bolted it to the back to the machine, it was uh, an additional uh, water seal so that moisture couldn't work its way down and then pass there. So, uh, so yeah, I'm gonna get to work. Okay, so I got this clutch pack apart and as I suspected after finding the seal destroyed in this thing, uh, these are the clutches. So sure enough, they got just coated in oil, soaked up all that gear oil and, uh, and just started slipping because they're supposed to be a dry clutch. So it looks like the springs um, are all in good shape. I haven't pressure tested them yet, but none of them are broken. So my guess is 
Uh, those are all fine. So once I get this leak fixed and new clutches in here, then everything should work good and I should be good to go. So I'm gonna start putting it back together. All right, so I got the new bearing and race. Uh, so you can see here, brand new uh, bearing. Um, there's the new race right in here. Um, these were, of course, the old ones that were just completely screwed up. So there's no way I could leave those back in there. This is not a cheap bearing. Um, here is the part number for it. And um, then the seals here. Figured I might as well give you guys the part number. So this is the part number and brand of the seal I got. Okay, so I have it all back together. I still have a couple things to paint, but the important part is it steers.